So I think everyone's been uh, let in from the, the waiting room. So good afternoon, everybody, uh, and welcome. So I'm Joanne Harvard. I think you know me all, but uh, the project manager for high performing workplaces. So the purpose really of today is to, to finally thank you, you all, and also to disseminate the findings from the independent endpoint evaluation of the high performing workplaces project, uh, which will be del delivered by Joanne McGillan from Harlow Consulting. Um, you'll also get to hear from some of the people that have benefited from the training, um, along with some of the highlights from our own um, internal team. Um, the chat is open if you wish to comment or ask questions. Um, but I'd like to start really by, by thanking you all. So that includes our delivery partner mm -hmm. colleges. Um, so thanking Luminate Education Group, Calderdale, Shipley and Wakefield, um, and also our private providers and universities, uh, many of which are in the audience today. So beyond our providers, we're also very grateful to the stakeholders mm -hmm. and businesses that have helped in many ways um, not only in the early days, they helped us um, develop the specifications for the project. Um, we've, we've also worked closely with the LEP and the intelligence have supported the development of the training offer. And then throughout the project, you've also, the stakeholders have been referring businesses and individuals onto the programme. Um, I'd also yeah. like to say uh, thanks to the uh, dedicated internal project team. So that's my colleagues at West Yorkshire Consortium of Colleges um, and in particular uh, Claire Harmon. So before we go on to the main findings, I just wanted to tell you really a little bit uh, about the journey since 2019 and what a journey it has been. Um, the project was developed to cover kind of four key areas of skills development. So this included export and innovation, um, HR, leadership, and also innovative working practices. So we launched this project really early in uh, 2020, and the project was significantly affected by the COVID pandemic, and also the associated restrictions that that placed on not only individuals, but businesses and also our education providers. Um, I'm going to just read a quote out, which I think uh, captures the kind of feeling at that time. Um, so all of our training fell off a cliff. This is one of our providers. And we've been looking for alternative ways to deliver. Businesses have more immediate priorities, such as keeping their business operating and changing the direction of their services. So over the period that followed, we underwent multiple rounds of procurement, um, really to ensure that there was a variety in the offering, but also to try and achieve some of the accredited training um, DWP ESF targets. Along the journey, we made significant requests to DWP. Um, we asked if we could support individuals from large organisations and we were pleased that they actually accepted this um, proposal. We also asked to change the profile of the outputs um, and to extend the timeframes beyond uh, the delivery end, which was September. Unfortunately, both of those um, two uh, requests were rejected. But pleasingly for us, the, the final financial claim went in on Friday, hallelujah. Um, we submitted that to DWP um, and during 2020 and 2021, the project did deliver against adversity. It has supported a whole, whole number, actually over a thousand individuals uh, personally, and it's also supported businesses um, to recover from the uh, pandemic. So the other benefits, um, that have been brought, there's wider benefits the project has brought, um, other than the training, so the skills brokerage and the collaboration 
Um, I'd now like to introduce Claire Harmon, who's going to outline some of the headline figures, um, the final kind of numbers for, for the project. Good afternoon, everyone. So as Joanne said, the final claim was submitted to DWP last Friday. A big sigh of relief with um, lots of mixed emotions with it being our final submission for the project. I'll cover some of the headline figures. So scores on the doors. We are looking to close what was a three million pound project on approximately 1.9 million spend against our original target to engage with 2,500 participants, there were a total of 1,038 supported through HPW. This was across 257 businesses engaged in the Leeds city region with the highest proportion falling within manufacturing, followed by professional services and construction. In terms of the district areas, highest uptake was from Leeds, followed by York, then Wakefield. This was not a fully funded programme. Businesses within the region have directly invested an accumulative total of 900k towards their skills and business needs within a period of time, unarguably the most economically challenging. Whilst this was a barrier for engagement on the project, it's also a key highlight. This was delivered across 25 delivery partners and providers. Pro Development and Brook made up the largest proportion, delivering a combined 45%, followed by our delivery partner, Calderdale College, at 16%. There were a number of providers with no footprint in the area, however, who managed to deliver. Total Support Training, BHP and Investors in Excellence. A number of rounds of procurement were undertaken to ensure a flexible and responsive offer, as well as the changing needs for businesses to survive and sustain over the last two years. We had a broad offer with over 300 courses, as well as coaching and mentoring and peer-to-peer -peer groups across a varied network of coaches, mentors and providers. And thanks to you all, you certainly persevered. Part of our deliverables to meet project outcomes included accredited training, so we undertook a dedicated round of procurement for accredited provision to enhance our offer and meet the ESF targets. In total, we had 103 achievements with a further 78 that were unable to achieve the qualification in time. Unfortunately, these numbers were significantly lower than the target set with demands being very much bespoke and tailored provision. As the project grew momentum in line with lockdown easement and businesses regaining confidence, there was not sufficient time for qualifications to start. The proportion of accredited provision on the project was 17%. I would, however, like to acknowledge those providers that delivered the accredited training to meet these results. Leeds Beckett University, Birkwood Plant Training, Wine School of Excellence and Results Driven Group. Popular in-demand areas of training included a varied suite of leadership programmes, strategic management as well as succession, sorry, succession planning, lean management systems and ISO training. Of the four components of the project, leadership and innovative working comprise the largest proportion of delivery, which demonstrates the impact of the pandemic, as well as, as, well as giving the skills to lead individuals in, in an adaptive and changing environment. It's fantastic to hear directly from some of those we've supported, sharing their experience with us, not losing sight that these are more than just numbers that we report on and real experiences. This now nicely brings me to Joanne from Harlow. Thank you, Claire. Um, nice to meet you all and a, a huge thank you for inviting me along today. Um, delighted to share with you um, an overview of the findings from the evaluation that we've undertaken. Um, should just be coming up in front of you some slides to share with you. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see those. I think they shall. They should be visible now. Um, 
just a little overview of the evaluation. First of all, we were we were contracted towards the end of 2021 to carry out an independent evaluation of the higher performing workplaces project, a project which ultimately aimed to complement existing skills uh, programmes in the region. Um, the aim of the evaluation was very much to provide a comprehensive understanding of the impact of the programme. Um, it's been informed by desk research, an online survey of beneficiaries, a process workshop and depth interviews as well. So it gives you a little bit of a flavour of the background. Joanne's obviously already mentioned the, the highly challenging context. Uh, it's incredibly important, so important to be aware and reflect on the highly challenging circumstances. The pandemic obviously in particular had a major impact. Project delivery was due to commence early in 2020, just as the first lockdown was imposed in, in March. Um, effectively, that halted all face to face delivery, at least in the short term or at least was was thought at that time to be in the short term. Um, WIC liaised and supported providers to transition um, as quickly as possible to an online offering. Um, but of course, not all provision um, was suited to, to delivery online. There was further challenge that not all businesses were in, in a position to engage with an online offer. Um, many businesses in scope of receiving training via the project faced significant challenges during the pandemic notably pressures on cash flow and the need to furlough staff. For, for most, it was, a, it was a time to endure and to focus on the immediate protection of their businesses. In spite of this, we, obviously we heard from Claire about the statistics, the numbers and the impressive reach of, of HPW, which is, is brilliant. Just to talk a little bit about project management and, and the collaborative delivery community that, that was created. Uh, firstly, as many as you, of you will be aware, there were, there were multiple rounds of procurement, which led to a considerable number of suppliers um, and ensured a variety of offerings and that, that those offerings were of high quality as well. Feedback from training providers and stakeholders relating um, to the project team has, has been incredibly positive, um, suggesting that ultimately the project team went above and beyond in their role. Um, a, a dedicated project group was established very early in the programme, that was pre-pandemic, um, which all WIC staff, um, the project team, delivery partners, providers, coaches and mentors, um, everybody was included and encouraged to attend regularly. Um, it really was a, a primary method of sharing key information, providing programme overview updates and contract information. And, and despite there being a similarity in some of the offerings uh, available, it, it wasn't seen as a competitive platform. In fact, far from it, it, it became a platform to share ideas and progress um, and really was felt to be pivotal to the programme's smooth running um, and success, especially during that lockdown periods. Um, the quotations that no doubt you've been reading through there um, further highlight the, the views of training providers and delivery partners from the research. So again, a, a quick um, overview of marketing and engagement. I know um, Alice is going to be speaking to you a bit, a bit later on, I believe. Um, but to ensure um, businesses were aware of the training and funding available um, and to generate interest, significant additional marketing activity was undertaken by the project team. Um, the overarching marketing strategy used within WIC has, uh, was applied to the project that, that comprised of high level business to business marketing, branding support for delivery partners and training providers and employer marketing. But in addition to the, the in addition to that, the, the team went over and above contractual requirements, um, particularly as a result of the challenges experienced during the pandemic. Um, the timeline there you'll see is extensive, even if you can't read all the, the individual um, activities that were undertaken. Um, so I'm, I'm sure Alice will be telling us more about that a little bit later on. Um, positive impacts experienced by participants. Um, the, the training provision content was deemed to be excellent um, overall and by all of the participants we, we spoke to that was the the, um, the level. Um, feedback was similarly positive about delivery effectiveness um, and associated communications as well. High quality really did come through throughout. 
participants reported an increase in both their level of knowledge and their level of confidence following inf interventions. Um, and they, the interventions themselves achieved strong impacts for the participants in a variety of areas. Um, most notably were communication skills, leadership skills and levels of motivation. Nearly three quarters of all survey respondents point to improvements in their working practice um, and over a quarter said that training has helped them to progress their career. Um, participants also point to benefits that they experienced that they weren't expecting. Um, it went above and beyond, um, notably um, the impact on quality of life. Um, again, quotations up there that you can see highlight the, the views of, of those people that experienced the training. So from an employer point of view, um, the, the key enabler for businesses was without doubt the funding. Um, the match funding reduced the cost of the training to, a, to an affordable, accessible level for employers. Um, businesses point to a range of benefits that they experience, but in particular, strengthened working relationships and team working relationships, both internal and external, um, improved management styles and that more positive work environment generally. Uh, the training and support has also he helped business owners improve decision making, um, improve performance and ultimately it's driven business growth. Again, we've got a range of quotations there from employers um, just to help support those, those aspects that I'm saying. Um, in terms of wider benefits um, that were identified, these have been considerable. Um, the offer was designed and delivered not just in accordance with ESF and DWP requirements, but also in, in close alignment with the need in the region and, and specifically the Leeds City Region Strategic Economic Plan um, 2016 to 36. The, the plan emphasises the importance of developing and building skills in businesses at all levels, notably leadership and management skills to underpin growth. Um, the majority, 54% of the training undertaken um, by businesses in, in the region um, under the programme um, was in leadership and management. The provision has also strongly contributed to the levelling up agenda um, by equipping businesses and individuals with bespoke skills that have helped to boost productivity and revenue. It's supported businesses in the region to successfully navigate the impact of the pandemic. It's equipped leaders with key skills. Project team have, have introduced flexibility wherever they could within the constraints of ESF and DWP funding rules. Um, they've adapted provision as far as they could in line with changing business needs. Relationships with and between business, uh, sorry, delivery partners and training providers have been markedly strengthened as well. Um, and feedback from providers and delivery partners about the impact of the project has, has really has been positive. Um, wider benefits have included facilitating and revitalising relationships with both former and new clients and internal capacity building as well. So in conclusion, uh, the project has, has delivered in unprecedented and highly challenging circumstances. It, it commenced in 2019, but was significantly affected um, by key events outside of the control of, of the project team or indeed anybody else. Um, many businesses in scope of, of receiving training face significant challenges during the pandemic, and that's obviously had a detrimental impact on performance. Although the project team didn't receive, didn't, did some, sorry, didn't achieve its target numbers in light of the challenging circumstances which I've described and, and Joe's mentioned as well, the numbers represent a significant achievement and beneficiaries and businesses report highly effective and highly positive outcomes. Multiple rounds of, of procurement ensured a variety of offerings which aligned closely with priorities in the Leeds City Region Stra Strategic Economic Plan and interventions have been high quality and have supported businesses in the region to successfully navigate the pandemic and the impacts. A key benefit are the relationships with delivery partners and training providers which have been strengthened, which leaves a well-established and really strong foundation for future delivery of training in the region.
And I think I'm going to be handing on to Alice, I believe. Thanks very much, Joanne. That was great. Um, it was lovely to hear some of that. Uh, so a lot of you probably know me already. I'm Alice Wood. I work in the marketing and communications team uh, at WYCC with uh, Lucy Davis, who is the marketing communications manager. So we worked really closely with um, providers and stakeholders throughout the project. And we just wanted to take this opportunity to thank you all for utilising the support we provided such as using the branding and assets on the members area and um, sending through your own marketing materials for us to check and feedback on, coming to us with your own ideas and involving us in um, updating your websites to include high performing workplaces. So we really appreciated you all being responsive and checking in. That was that was great. And thank you for working with us on our suggestions and requirements as well. Um, in addition to this, we attended most of the regular project group meetings, so um, it was great to use these meetings and you came to us with suggestions for new ways to get the message out to businesses and it was really good to get your market insights as well. Uh, so Lucy and I responded to your ideas in the form of uh, some specific campaigns, uh, such as creating materials like flyers, organising the taster sessions, and social media posts such as the mini um, Meet the Mentors campaign that we ran as well. And we worked with you all to help tell the story about what made you unique as providers and how you were supporting businesses. So um, when, we, when we offered to case study you as providers, it was great to see so many of you come forward. Uh, it was great to get to know your offers better as well. And thank you to those of you who got involved in our wider events. Um, just off the top of my head, for example, Pro Development spoke at our um, annual West Yorkshire Skills Partnership Conference. And also thank you for connecting and engaging with us on social media. Um, I know quite a few of you helped to spread the word about the project and share the benefits of the funding. Um, and thank you for putting us in touch with the businesses you've supported, um, which enabled us to create case studies. We really enjoyed speaking to those individuals and hearing how the training helped them personally and professionally. Um, so that's that's built up a really nice collection of case studies, which is a great snapshot into the, the kind of work that the project did. Um, and it'd be great to hear a bit more from specific participants shortly. Uh, but first, I'll pass over to Dom Brook from Brook Corporate Developments. And I think Dom will be discussing how the High Performing Workplaces project benefited Brook as a provider and how the project supported their client base as well. So thank you and over to you, Don. Hi, everyone. Um, cheers, Alice. Thanks for that. Um, just as a way of introduction. So, yeah, my name's Don from Brook Corporate Developments, where uh, um, if you don't know, we're a business support consultancy and training provider based in South Yorkshire, so our, uh, our headquarters is in uh, in the business village in Barnsley. So, um, with regards to to, to HPW, so um, as everybody knows, when when, uh, when high performing workplaces get first uh, first came around, we were then uh, really ambitious with, with our plans and uh, how we were then going to um, utilise this um, this platform for, for funded support both with our clients, but also trying to engage and, and market new. And then the famous C word came around and COVID uh, kind of heavily impacted us on, uh, on, on what, what we could actually do. Because in terms of our delivery, we're, we're pretty much 95 to 97% on, on employer site, which means that during that period was very challenging for us because before things like online platforms came around to deliver and, uh, and it was so unexpected that you know, why I would our client base and and new and and potentially new businesses w wouldn't have an external consultant or trainer go on to site, um. So it was it was near on impossible for us to um to to engage in the first instance without actually adapting the way that we work, um. The eighteen months proved very successful for us on 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 HPW and. Um, I can't kind of thank the team from HPW or WYCC enough in the level of support that they gave to us and uh, and transparency with um, businesses that we hadn't engaged with um, outside of our network of uh, of clients because 
Um, it was down to the the efforts of and, and the communication and the transparency of um, of the team that we were be we were able to support over 40 businesses and 200 individuals within those businesses across um, across the full kind of project um, from from start to finish. So. Um, for us as a, as a training provider, we, um, the, the flexibility of HBW was, was key to our success. So out of those 40 businesses that we engaged with, um, we delivered anything from one day refresher courses all the way through to full year bespoke packages. And we've, we've never really worked on something so flexible to say you can, you can fund something from one day all the way up to what what we class as a 30-day program over the year um, without going through various different levels of due diligence and authorization checks, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it was down, once again, it was down to our relationship with, with our contract manager, Claire, um, to have bespoke monthly, in fact, probably weekly conversations about the, the, the businesses we're engaging with to say, we've got X project, is how can we get this through on this project in terms of um, in, in in terms of kind of making sure that we hit all criteria that we need to do for for compliance on on the contract and um, we, we've had a great relationship um, for, throughout the project to make sure that every single business that that we we were engaging with managed to benefit from the program and the flexibility of it was, was key to that success so. Um, uh, including in those 40 businesses, 28 of those businesses were, were completely new to Brook, um, both referred to us from a skills advisor or from WYCC or um, a business that inquired to us directly. And then we then brought that project into, uh, into the program. So that was over two thirds. So in terms of us expanding our network in, in West Yorkshire is, um, you know, two years ago, we were predominantly a South Yorkshire based business and where that had some connections in West Yorkshire and um, it, it enabled us to rapidly expand our brand and um, and kind of rapidly expand our network of, of clients in in West Yorkshire and um, something that we, we really capitalized on and actually we're really grateful for as, as a business because we've created some really long lasting um, links with key operational and senior staff in the region um, that has really helped us as a business grow over the last two years. And we, we generally put the the, um, the great work there and the great relationships and, and this project down to some of the contract wins that we've had, such as Made Smarter and the Let's Talk Real Skills Diagnostic Project, which is um down to kind of the the catapult we we call it as the, which which was hpw so um the level of businesses that we've engaged with like you said has gone all the way from one day up to bespoke packages but for example we we um engaged a business in in north yorkshire which um inquired to us about doing some um yellow belt six sigma training um split over five cohorts of, of um 30 people in total over five cohorts of learners and we the to come back to the flexibility that the higher performing workplaces gave us that flexibility to engage that business, create a bespoke package for them, um, and and it really did make it was the differentiator between us winning that project and and not winning that project it was purely down to HVW, and this is something that we um, we still keep in touch with that business and they talk to us every, pretty much every week about how um, successful the program's been. And, and and we generally put it down to and once again the flexibility and the relationship that we that we had with the program um to, to even get that link in the first place. So um kind of lastly just before I wrap up, I, I'd just like to say a massive thanks to everybody from WYCC that's that, that's engaged with us on this program from um con kind of overall program management down to the um, under the kind of operational staff that's that's referred work into us. Um, it, it genuinely has been a pleasure of working with you on the program. I, I think when, when Joanne sent the email around to, um, around the um, potential um, extension or justification to extend, I, I think I wrote in that to say it's, it's a shame the project isn't, uh, isn't going because we, we used it as a, a catalyst to, to grow. Hopefully that we can kind of continue working with, uh, with, with you guys moving forward on different programs and 
like you say, it's uh, it's been a pleasure. So thanks for all your efforts on on this program to support both our um, client base and uh, and and new clients moving uh, in, into Brook for the better of uh, of their business, but for the better of skill development of the region. Thanks very much, Don. That was lovely to hear. Um, it's great to hear how it's it's not just benefited um, your, your clients, which is obviously great in the aim of the project, but you as a as a provider as well. Um, so we're going to hear from our first participant now, which is Joanna Rushchik from Leeds Bronze. Um, so go ahead, Joanna. You could just tell us a little bit about your experience. That would be that would be amazing. Um, hi, uh, my name is Joanna. Um, thank you for introducing me, Alice. Um, I work for an engineering company in South Leeds. Um, last two years were challenging, and I think this is a um, very generous statement. Um, our company, in terms of personnel, um, has shrunk by 80%. And with this, uh, we observed loss of skills. Uh, loss of experience, loss of wonderful characters uh, and morale to some extent. Um, unfortunately, that 80% of the workforce, most of them were made redundant. Um, but we are existing as a company and we had to pick everything up and um, just simply keep going. Now, like I said, because we lost lots of skills and experience, uh, we then had to quickly train people to perform roles. Those roles became very flexible and diverse. And um, we just um, had to do what, 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 what every company has to do, just to give examples. We suddenly um, lost two thirds of our quality assurance team, uh, two thirds of health and safety team. And I can tell you these were the most experienced two thirds. We've lost lots of managers, we've lost entire departments. Um, so I can only see say that without help from WICC, we wouldn't be able to achieve that. We just simply wouldn't be able to afford that as you can imagine, uh, when companies shrinking this much, there isn't much money for training. So therefore, um, funding, first of all, but also advice and expertise, uh, putting us um, in touch with brilliant training providers really made a difference. And for that, I'd like to thank you all. And um, ask you to do whatever you're doing right now because you're doing it really well. Thank you. Thanks very much, Joanna. Um, and although it's a shame to hear about everything Leeds Bronze has gone through, it's still nice to know that we, we helped in some way. And I think, um, Joanna, you train, you had training with um, Brooke and Leeds City College. Um, so it's great that you had that sort of range of support. Um, so next, we're going to hear from Annie Kilburn from Swallow Dental. Um, I, I think Annie did a, quite a, a wide range, well, Swallow Dental in general had quite a wide range of support from pro development. So it'd be great to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm the finance manager at Swallow. Um, uh, I'm part of a, quite a small le a senior leadership team of, of three people. Um, we're a wholesaler of surgical and hygiene dental instruments. Uh, we're based near Keithley in West Yorkshire. Um, so we engage with pro development, uh, first of all, through uh, the business resilience program that was run by the LEP um, during the beginning of COVID. And our motivation for engaging um, in that, that offering uh, was because we felt like we were quite disengaged with our staff um, and communication was quite disjointed because we had um, people furloughed and we had people working remotely um, and it just it felt like even though everyone was kind of plodding on with their job roles managers weren't as engaged as they should be with their staff and um, we weren't fully sure of the productivity of our staff as well we just had that real gap 
um, between managers and employees. Um, and I think before we engaged in the training with pro-development, um, there wasn't much focus on training, there wasn't much focus on staff um, development and engagement at all. Um, so because it was free to start with, um, my, my director was willing to see, um, see how it would help us. Um, and I think straight away he saw the benefit and that kind of then snowballed um, with us uh, engaging a lot, lot of different programmes that pro-development offered uh, with the help of the um, WYCC funding. Um, so the first thing that we did was a staff engagement survey. This involved um, uh, putting out a survey to all our staff, allowing them to give us honest feedback about all different areas of the business um, and their um, their job roles. Um, it made them be more open and honest with us because it was an anonymous survey. Um, so we got so much valuable feedback from that in ways that we could improve um, and ensure that our staff were engaged and obviously more likely to, to stay with us and, and reduce staff turnover. Um, but the, the whole programme as a, as a whole um, created that focus on staff wellbeing and staff development and that since then it, it just hasn't gone away. Everything that we do now, um, every decision making um, that we do is, is all focused on that. It always comes back to the actions that we have for the staff engagement survey. Um, we've actually done a second one now um, and our engagement has improved significantly and we're still working with pro development now to ensure that these actions get done. I think I think that's the key thing is that we now have accountability with someone that's external and it you know makes all of us as managers managers accountable to them. Um, the second thing that we got offered was the leadership program, um, which was uh, something that we'd never seen on offer before because it was a seven month program, even though it, it actually went on a lot a lot longer because of COVID and weather. Um, uh, but it was it was a sort of a transformational experience. It wasn't classroom learning. It was um, doing workshops, going, doing walks, um, orienteering, raft building, and applying all the theories that pro development advocate into those activities. Um, and it really helped me and my colleague Ben. Um, it helped those skills and those tools to really sink in and now we use them on a daily basis and it's it's really transformed the way that we manage people especially myself um i was quite new to managing and it really built my my confidence um to be able to lead my team and put all the tools and the skills that i learned on that program um into play um the other program that we engaged with was um uh sort of it was almost like coaching for our management team um so the actual program was called building teams for the future but it was it was focused on our leadership team and the way that we work together because at the time um it wasn't so much tension but we just we weren't connected as people um we weren't very honest with each other um and it kind of facilitated a lot of honest conversations um expressing how we felt and, and now we work together so much more um, collaboratively. We're very honest. Uh, we're not afraid to give um, negative feedback um, and challenge each other. And that facilitates more ideas generation. And, and we have much more of a professional relationship, which has just helped um, not only us as a team, but I think the rest of the business respect us more um, because they see that we're working much better together as a leadership team. Um, and lastly, uh, we've also benefited from coaching for individual members um, of our staff. We had coaching through the leadership program, so I kind of knew what what it was going to be offered like. I knew that it wasn't going to be um, too formal or too corporate. It was very um, based on your personal goals and it fitted in really well with our appraisal system that we've just put in. Um, where we can target key areas for improvement and have really personal coaching for those um, areas for improvement rather than going um, to an external provider for uh, formal training where it might be too broad. Um, so that's, that's really helped um, improve just small areas, soft skills, things like that for, for my team. Um, and yeah, I 
think that's that's everything that we've engaged with. Um, so yeah, and I'd like to thank Pro Development and the fact that we could get the funding through uh, WYCC because I think that helped <laughs> help my boss uh, engage with it definitely. Thanks very much, Annie. That was lovely to hear. And um, thanks again as well for uh, letting us case study you as well a few months ago. Um, so yeah, if you want to find out more about um, Solo Dental's experience, there's a case study on our website as well. And um, so lastly, we're going to speak to Sonia Rhodes um, uh, from Nuffield Health. And I believe Sonia's undertaken training through high performing workplaces uh, with Leeds Beckett. Um, yeah, if you'd like to let us uh, know a little bit more about your experience, that'd be great. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Hi, everybody. Hope you can hear me okay. Uh, so the first thing, uh, actually, I'd like to start with before I talk about my experience is uh, how much I've had my eyes open just being on this call today. Um, I was blessed with having the, the experience of this course, but I can see the lovely James Clark on the call. Hi, James. And uh, James was very much the person that facilitated everything that you are all describing today on my behalf uh, and indeed my colleagues on, on the course for effective coaching and mentoring at Leeds Beckett University. So to actually meet and listen to listen to you all describe everything that you've been through to get this journey, because James handled that so efficiently, honestly, I've really had my eyes open today and, and I can uh, wholeheartedly say how much I appreciate everything that you've done uh, and as you've described uh, I won't kind of wax lyrical about COVID working in a hospital believe me <laughs> it's um, it's had its effects uh, but yes without your help and support and funding I, I don't think that we would have been facilitating certainly my personal journey so thank you to you all because I've learned such a lot today about how many people have really helped to achieve that and I hope to give you a sense of, of personal impact that that makes. So I work at a, a private hospital in the, in the heart of Leeds City Centre. And my job is to make quality improvements, which is wide and varied, uh, but all really with our patients in mind. Um, and, and usually based on their direct feedback or interaction with the hospital. Uh, sadly, that sometimes means complaints. Often it's also in the form of our patient satisfaction survey. And uh, I, I'll, I'll speak plainly. I like to think I know my way around private healthcare. I've worked in private healthcare for a lot of years. And I found it difficult from a quality improvement point of view where there was parts of the journey where I just didn't seem to be getting the traction, making the difference, engaging the teams to improve practices, make a difference to our patient journey. And, and there was times where it just felt like a real block. And uh, I reached out uh, to, to people to kind of go, well, what, what is it that makes a difference in your organisation? How does this work? And coaching came up uh, time and time again I was listening to Annie just then and I couldn't help but smile to the screen because uh, little did I know how much coaching would make a difference to not only the, the way that I, I manage within an organisation but to patient care. Um, so uh, a very short notice, rapid terms around, turnaround thanks to James's help, I joined the course for Effective Coaching and Mentoring, ILM5. And I'll be honest, I thought I knew what I would get out of it and I actually thought I'd be pretty good at it because I probably had most of it in the bag. Wow, <laughs> I went on quite a personal journey. Um, and what I realised is not that there's anything wrong with it, but my style was very mentoring in approach. I came from a place of experience. I thought I knew what I was doing. I was giving really good, as I thought, advice. And what I learned on the course not only changed my ability to get people to come up with their own great solutions, it empowered our, our workforce to think and behave differently through simple conversations. Coaching um, has enabled us to retain staff in very difficult market. Um, it's helped us to um, further develop our team. It's helped them take and breathe life into their own projects for the benefits of our patients. It's honestly been utterly life changing for me uh, to realise that I don't have to have all the answers. I don't have to have all the know how. And it's released so many quality improvements that have directly impacted on 
hundreds if not thousands of patient journeys um, are predominantly from the Yorkshire area. So um, I don't want to over egg the pudding when I say it's been literally life changing. And beyond that, it had further benefits, unexpected uh, and marvellous benefits. Who knew that coaching could be very effective with a, a five year old and eight year old child? Uh, bit of homeschooling and a coaching approach to life meant that it was a bit less painful and a lot more productive. Um, so if any of you are in doubt as to whether coaching is a suitable tool, I 100% I recommend it. It's utterly life changing and truly without uh, the real depth of knowledge that, I, that I, I've got a sense of this morning, all of that that happened behind the scenes. Well, that was so expertly managed by James that, that honestly, I, I didn't have the huge amount of gratitude for it that I do now. So thank you to you all. Thanks very much, Sonia. That was really, really lovely to hear. Um, I, I think as, as a team, often don't get a chance to hear this kind of thing firsthand as well. So thank you very much to all, all three of you who've spoken about your experience. Um, and I think uh, Joanne Harvard, I think you just wanted to close the meeting and just say a last few things, last couple of things. I feel a bit overwhelmed, to be honest. <laughs> I feel like scrapping my own speech and just picking up on some of the things that you've said. But um, so I obviously lived and uh, breathed this project and I was the one that had to tell everybody that we didn't get an extension, which was a real shame. Uh, just want to thank, you know, all the speakers. Um, I think the success really lies in um, resilience, hard work, uh, partnership working, uh, collaboration. So that will be collaboration between your contract manager and your providers, um, internally in our team, um, between the supply chains uh, and individuals. I think that um, this has allowed strong long-term reciprocal relationships to develop. Um, the evaluation and the presentation has shown real positive outcomes from the training. Um, I think they, they speak for themselves. Um, for us at the, the consortium, we will continue to be dedicated to supporting individuals and businesses um, to help with skills to grow, uh, to improve productivity. We have a, <coughs> we'll have a strong focus uh, moving forward on sustainability and green skills. Uh, this project has uh, supported economic growth. And as we all know, skills and training are identified as critical areas in the Leveling Up white paper. And with over a thousand people trained um, in really what has been described as really high quality training, I think that's exactly what was needed to deliver this skills boost um, to local people uh, and businesses. So I think before I get emotional, I think we'll, uh, we'll just thank you all and uh, I will bring this uh, webinar to a close. So thanks, everybody. Thanks very much, everyone, and thanks for joining today. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Good to see everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Congratulations, everybody, you've done so well.